Hello, welcome to the tutorial on drawing electrical circuits in PowerPoint. I hope that this tutorial will be useful to you and your students. Let's start by looking at some common electrical symbols that students will use in diagramming electrical circuits. One of the slides that I've provided that will be available to students and teachers alike on the Agricultural Education website is a slide that has electrical symbols that have been drawn or provided for you to use. Some of these symbols took a lot of time to draw. You can draw your own if you'd like, um, or you can use the ones that have already been prepared for you. We'll start by looking at this symbol, which is a duplex receptacle. You'll notice that on this duplex receptacle, there's a tab on either side. So that this one is intact. It can be used in any 120 volt circuit. If you look over here, this is a split wired duplex receptacle and we have the electrical symbol for a split wired duplex receptacle. Other symbols on this slide include a switch with four terminals. This could be used as a four way switch or as a double pole switch. We also have another symbol for a receptacle. We've got a symbol here that represents the keyless light. It's simply a circle that has a open circle terminal, which is the silver terminal, and a colored in terminal, which would represent our brass terminal. Other symbols here would be the electrical symbol for a duplex receptacle, the electrical symbol for a ground fault circuit interrupter, a GFCI protected, a 20 amp, 240 volt, two pole, three wire grounding type receptacle, a single pole switch, a three-way switch, a four-way switch, and a service entrance panel. We also have a picture of the wiring frame that is used in our electrical wiring contest. Another thing that we need to do for consistency's sake is use recognized colors for our electrical conductors. Many teachers will teach their students to use dotted lines or, or squiggly lines, which is perfectly acceptable. It's just that in PowerPoint, we have the opportunity to use colors. Therefore, we should. If we look, we've got a black line and a red line. Ungrounded or hot conductors are commonly insulated with either black or red insulation in 12 gauge and 14 gauge non-metallic cable. We've also got a blue line. The blue line represents our white insulated grounded conductor, also called a neutral. We have a green line, and green is the color according to the National Electrical Code that will be used to indicate equipment grounding conductors. In our case, this could be an insulated grounding conductor, or it could be the bare copper equipment ground that we typically find in non-metallic cable. Just makes it a lot easier to grade and to look at circuits if everyone's using the same colors. Another slide that is here to help you and your students is a list of some of the commonly used electrical symbols. These symbols, or this list rather, is not comprehensive, but just a list of some of the common ones that students would encounter either in circuits for agricultural education, the EMC wiring contest, or the Agricultural Mechanics Career Development event. We look, we see a circle, and the simple circle simply represents a ceiling outlet. The ceiling outlet could be for a fluorescent fixture, or it could be for, or a, rather not fluorescent, but it could be for compact fluorescent light bulbs, or it could be for a ceiling fan. Typically in our wiring, we're just using keyless lamps. We've got a symbol here that is for a single receptacle outlet. Remember, these are the symbols like we would use in a floor plan, not necessarily what we would use in diagramming an electrical circuit. Symbol for duplex receptacle, split wired, switched convenience outlet, GFCI, GFCI protecting. We also have these symbols here for single pole switch, just a simple S. S with a subscript two would be a double pole switch and S for the subscript three for a three-way switch, S subscript four, four-way switch. You'll also notice on here a rectangular box. This one is horizontal with diagonal stripes, and this is the symbol for a service entrance panel.
Let's look at how to diagram, use some of the diagramming tools that are provided for us in PowerPoint. If I look up at the toolbar, I see the word insert. If I click on insert, another toolbar opens up below, and I see shapes. If I click on the arrow, a drop-down window or pop-up window will appear, and it has shapes that we can use in PowerPoint. The top tier of these shapes are ones that I have commonly used. You'll train your PowerPoint to put the ones most commonly used up at the front too. If you don't see it up here, just look through some of the other tiers and you'll find the shape that you desire. The first symbol or the wiring diagram symbol that I want to work with today is going to be the service entrance panel. I'm gonna do this by taking my cursor and placing it over the rectangle, clicking and releasing. You'll notice that my cursor has changed from an arrow to a crosshair. If I left click and hold and then drag, I can draw a rectangular box to, the, to, my, to my desired dimensions. You'll notice that default fills this with a light blue color. I don't want any shape fill. So to affect that, I come up here to the format window. If I look on the left side, I see shape fill. If I click the arrow, I can select no fill. It's hard to tell right now in this, but this color for the lines is actually a light blue. In order to affect anything in PowerPoint, I must select it. To select it, I take my cursor, hover over the shape. You'll notice that I have got a crosshair with arrows on it. I click, and you'll notice that my shape now has been selected and is surrounded by dots. I come up here to my shape outline, I click on it, and I can select the color that I desire, which in this case is black. I also want to change the outline. This is very thin and difficult to see. If I click shape outline and release, I can come down to weight, I can click on it, and then come over and I'm going to select a three point font. And it didn't work, so let's try that again. It's black. three-point font, and you can see that it's a lot easier to see. The symbol for the service entrance panel has to be filled with diagonal lines. Here again, in order to affect it, I must select it. Click on the shape. In this case, I'm going to go to shape outline. Excuse me, shape fill. I'm going to go to texture. Go down to more texture, and then the pop-up window appears on the right side. I want a pattern fill. I'm going to select the diagonal stripes wide downward. I want to scroll down so that I can change the color. This is a foreground shape, and I'm going to change my color to black. Now I have the symbol for the service entrance panel. Other commonly used shapes that we'll use will be those for device boxes. The first device box that we're going to do is going to be an octagonal box. I've used the octagonal octagon shape tool many times. If you do not see it in the top tier, simply come down to basic shapes, select the octagon, click on it and release. In my slide, I can left click and hold and drag until I get to the desired shape and size. I've released it, and this is already selected. With it selected, I'm going to change the outline to black. I'm going to change my shape fill to clear. Another device box that we'll commonly use is a device box for switches and receptacles. This is usually a rectangular shape box. Choose the rectangle tool, click and drag. Here again, I'm going to change it with it selected to no fill. And I'm going to change the outline to black. The other device box that we will use, depending upon the number of conductors in a particular box, will be a square. Still using the rectangle tool. We just drag until we get a shape that is square rather than rectangular. Then with it selected, we can click on no fill, 
and we can change our borders to black. Another drawing tool that we can use is a shape that we'll use for drawing a solderless connector, commonly referred to as a wire nut. If you look down here in basic shapes, this looks sort of like a wire nut. It's a trapezoid. I can click on trapezoid. I can come in and draw it to the desired size. You'll notice that it has this semicircle with an arrow. The semicircle with an arrow is so that I can change the orientation or the position of that to fit on the conductors that I'm going to draw. We'll draw some conductors and attach them together with solderless connectors in a little bit. For the time being, let's talk about how do we change the shape or the color. We know that the commonly used colors for solderless connectors or wire nuts are going to be yellow, red, and green. So with my shape selected, I'm going to change the shape fill. In this case, let's make it red. You'll notice that my outline is still the blue color. I want to change my outline too. So to affect it, I must select it and go to outline and change it to red. Now I have a red wire nut. If I wanted to copy this, I can right click and release. Rather, right click, release, copy, right click, paste. I've duplicated it. Now I'm going to change the color of this one. I'm going to go up here to format, click on format, go to shape fill. We're going to make this one yellow. We're going to make our shape, shape outline yellow. Now we have a yellow solderless connector. I've already copied that. It's still here. I right click and paste. I've got it again. Now I can change this one to green. Select format, shape fill, choose the color green you want, outline, choose the color green that you'd like to have. So those are some of the basic drawing tools. We'll get into how to draw electrical conductors here in just a few minutes. Let's look at a circuit that we can diagram together. This is one of the first basic electrical circuits that most teachers are going to use, and this is two duplex receptacles in parallel. We look at this diagram, we see a floor plan. This is what students will commonly encounter in the wiring competition and in the ag mechanics contest. Our floor plan shows a service entrance panel, and it shows that from the service entrance panel, we're going to go to a duplex receptacle, and from the first duplex receptacle, we're going to go to another duplex receptacle. Down below, we have a ladder diagram, or ladder logic. Looking at the ladder logic, we've got a black line. This black line represents the ungrounded conductor. This is one 120 volt phase coming from a circuit breaker inside the service entrance panel. You'll notice that it runs uninterrupted. You'll notice that we tap into that conductor and carry power to each duplex receptacle individually so that current does not have to pass through one duplex receptacle in order to get to the other. This is a parallel circuit. Our grounded conductor or neutral conductor, which is our white insulated conductor, likewise, returns back to the service entrance. Let's diagram this circuit following some basic rules for wiring. These basic rules for wiring are provided for your students. You may add to them you may change the wording on them to what you've told them in class, but they can follow these and should be able to wire any electrical circuit that you give them. So let's go to a blank screen and let's diagram our circuit. Now, we could simply copy and paste elements from one of these other slides if we wanted to, but let's practice drawing one more time. We're gonna to go to Insert, Shapes, we're going to select the rectangle by clicking on it. We've got our crosshair available to us now. And we're going to draw us a service entrance panel. I'm not going to draw this quite as large as I did before. Now we want to change our shape fill. First thing I'm going to do is go to no fill. Then I'm going to go back to shape fill. I'm going to select texture. I'm going to go to more texture. Pattern fill. 
select the diagonal stripes. It doesn't matter which direction the diagonals run. We'll use this one this time. I'm going to move my bar until I can see the foreground color window. I'm going to select black. I can also remember change the outline shape or size or color. I'm going to select black. Now I have my service entrance panel drawn. From our floor plan, we know <clears throat> that we're going to go to a duplex receptacle. There are a lot of ways that we could do this. We're going to follow the rule of the one third rule for electrical wiring that we would follow in our EMC wiring contest. I'm going to start by selecting rectangle shape for a device box. And I'm going to draw it down sort of low from our service panel. Now that I've drawn this, I want to duplicate it because I've got two duplex receptacles. Remember, to affect it, I must select it. This is selected. If I hover over this, I see my crosshairs with the arrows on the end. I right click, copy, right click, paste, and I've duplicated. I've got a box that is exactly the same size. I left click and hold and move. You'll notice that when I do this, I get some dotted lines that show me when I have this aligned so that my two boxes are even with one another. The box I've just copied and pasted is selected. If I hold the control button on my keyboard down, and click on the other box. Now I've selected both boxes. I can go to Format. I can change the Shape Fill and the Shape Outline. My Shape Fill it didn't work. Let's try it again. Select it. Select the other box. Go to Shape Fill. There we go. It changes both. I can change the Shape Outline to black. Somehow or another, I ended up with three boxes. That's what the problem was. So that's good. Let's talk about what to do. I don't want three boxes. I want two. To affect it, I must select it. Now I hit delete on the keyboard. Problem solved. All right. So I have my two device boxes for my parallel duplex receptacles. I want to run some electrical conductor. I can choose to come out the top go over and down, or I can come out the bottom, over and up. I'm going to come out of the bottom of the service panel. To do that, I'm going to go to Insert, Shapes, and I'm just going to select the line drawing tool. I'm going to left click, I get my crosshairs, I'm going to place, place the crosshair at the bottom of the service panel, I'm going to draw a line straight down. I've got to go back and pick up my shape tool again. I'm going to place the crosshairs over where I left off. I'm going to go over to what I think is about center way of the box, and I'm going to release. Here again, I've got to go back and pick up my drawing tool every time, which is a little inconvenient, but it's not bad. Select my drawing tool again to run my conductor to the top plate of my wiring frame. Then I'm just going to simply finish drawing until I get a conductor run connecting both of the boxes to the service panel. Okay, these lines represent the cable. Look, this one's not quite horizontal. If I select it, I can correct that problem just by simply moving it. These lines represent the conductor run back to the service entrance panel. I want to make those a little easier to see in a more appropriate color. So, to affect it, I have to select it. I'm going to select one line. Then, releasing the mouse, I'm going to hold Control. Then, left click and release on each of the lines that I want to affect. Once all of them are selected, I can release the Control button. I can go to Shape Outline. I can, collect, I can select black here. Then I can just move over to Shape Outline, Weight, and I can change the weight to something that's easier to see. Most conductor isn't black, 
So let's change that. Select each of, each of the conductors is selected. I want this to be 12 gauge wire, so I'm going to turn that yellow. All right, we've got our conductor run and we've got our device boxes. We're ready to diagram a circuit and put in some devices. If you'll scroll up to the symbol page, I can right click on the symbol that I want. In this case, it's a duplex receptacle. Let's try that again. Right click, copy. I'm going to go back down to my screen, right click, and paste. And if we look, that's a pretty good size receptacle for the box that I've drawn. It is still selected. I've still copied it. All I got to do is hit paste again, and now I have both of the receptacles that I need. I can move them around until they get pretty even with one another. All right, we're ready to wire this circuit. Following the basic rules for wiring, we're going to take care of our neutral conductor first. The basic rule is that the neutral conductor must travel from any device that utilizes current uninterrupted back to the service entrance panel. In order for this to travel uninterrupted, <clears throat> I'm going to select the curve symbol. Okay? So I'm going to select the curve symbol, left click and release. We'll come down here and this is my source conductor and this is going to be my neutral. I left click and release, left click and release, left click and double click so that I've ended. I'm going to change the color of it. There's my white conductor. In order for this to be uninterrupted, I've got to connect the neutral conductor that's going to leave this box and travel to the other box. I'm going to go to insert, shape, select the curve tool, left click release, left click release, left click release, change the color. Now I've got to run a jumper from these two neutral conductors over and connect it to my duplex receptacle. Insert, shape, curve tool. Now my first duplex receptacle has the neutral conductor connected to it. I can also draw my solderless connector now. Remember, go to insert and shapes. Because I have used this symbol recently, the trapezoid is up on the top tier. I left click and release. Then I can draw it. The default color is going to be that blue color. I want to change the shape fill to yellow. I've only got three conductors, or if you'd rather, if you, want, you can make it red. We'll make it red. I'm going to change the outline to red as well. Then I'm going to orient this so that when I left click, hold, and drag, I show that those conductors are all connected together inside a wire nut or a solderless connector. All right, let's finish wiring our neutral conductor to our other one. This neutral is traveling through this non-metallic cable. It's going to enter this box and connect to the duplex receptacle. From insert, we're going to select shape. We're going to select the curve tool and simply every time I click, I release and move until I get the desired shape. And that takes a little bit of practice. And we're going to change this to our blue that represents our white grounded conductor or neutral. All right, we've got to carry our ungrounded conductor or our hot wire. And this time we're going to use the terminals that are on the duplex receptacle. Now, when I do this, that is wiring this receptacle in series. But as long as that tab that exists right there is intact, then this entire circuit will work. There's nothing in the National Electrical Code that prevents you from using the terminals. All right, I have selected the curve tool. And I'm going to just let this sort of gently curve around and down and 
until I get to the brass colored or the closed terminals. And I want to change the color. Okay, and we're going to use a black color for our hot conductors. Now I'm going to leave the other terminal by selecting the curve tool. I'm going to leave this terminal and I'm going to draw my black conductor in the cable. so that it is carrying through this cable to our other box. So finally, we're going to select the curve tool, and every time I click, I release, and I move my cursor until I get to the desired point. Now we have successfully wired the grounded and ungrounded conductors to our duplex receptacles. Remember, this is wiring in series. This is wiring parallel. As long as this tab remains intact, this circuit will work. Should this tab burn out, then this part of the duplex receptacle and this entire duplex receptacle would not work. But this is an acceptable wiring method according to the National Electrical Code. As long as it's not a multi-wire branch circuit, which is beyond the scope of this tutorial, that would affect our neutral conductors. The last thing we need to do is we need to ground everything. In wiring that we teach in agricultural education, typically we're talking about surface-mounted metal boxes. The National Electrical Code refers to these as normally non-current carrying enclosures. So any box that is metal that contains electrical conductors or devices would be a normally non-current carrying enclosure. As such, the code requires that we connect these boxes and devices to our service entrance panel grounding bus. The purpose of this is so that in the event of a ground fault, we provide an alternate path back to the neutral conductor or back to the transformer. So a ground fault would use the low resistance of a bare copper grounding conductor or insulated grounding conductor to carry that fault current back through to the grounding bus where the ground is tied to the neutral. The neutral would carry it back to the transformer. The transformer would carry it back to our phases um, on the main breaker, which would send it to the circuit breaker, which would open up. So that ground fault current, in order to make it trip, we need to provide an alternate safe path back to the neutral. All of this happens very, very fastly because electricity travels at the speed of light. So we don't have to worry too much about getting shot as long as things are properly wired and grounded. To do that, we're gonna go to insert we're going to select shape. We're going to select the curve again. Our bare copper conductor coming from our neutral bus inside the service panel here is going to come up, and I'm just going to draw it right here. I want to change that to the acceptable color of green. I'm going to then connect it to the other bare copper grounding conductor in the box. It's going to be green. Then I've got to connect those conductors to our metal box. I can accomplish this a couple of different ways. I'm going to come over here and select my duplex receptacle. You see it's selected. Now I'm going to select the green dot. All right, once I've selected the green dot, then I can right click on it. I can copy it and I can right click and paste. If you'll look, I have made a duplicate. I want to click off because I don't want that selected. With it not selected, I'm going to hover over it, left click and hold. Now I can move that without changing the shape of it or the size of it, okay? Then I release. We're going to connect in this box, assuming that we have a grounding pigtail with screws. So this would be a green insulated conductor that is connected to the box by a terminal screw. So in this case, my source grounding conductor, my grounding conductor leaving through non-metallic cable to my other box, and my box are all electrically connected by a bonding conductor. 
In this example, I'm going to add one more conductor to our group here. I'm going to take this conductor and we're going to connect it to the bonding terminal on our device. I'm going to change it green. Code does allow us to not attach this as long as the metal yoke of this device comes into full contact with the metal box. Safe thing to do is bond both. If you're getting a grade on this young people, then you can just rest assured that if you bond both, everybody's going to be happy. I'm going to select our red solderless connector by, let's do that again. I'm just going to right click and release. I'm going to copy, release, right click and paste. I'm going to pull this over here and I'm going to rotate it around and I'm going to change it by selecting format. I want my shape outline to be green. I want my shape fill to be green. Now I've got a green solderless connector. Of course, it doesn't have to be a greeny. The green's got the hole in the end of it. I just like to use the green to indicate that we are using a grounding wire. The last thing to do is to bond our last device, and we're going to do things a little bit differently. We're still going to use the curve, but in this case, we're just going to connect the box because code allows it and we could use a grounding clip there. Now, if you would like for your grounding clip to be represented by, I can right click on, let's try, let's try it again. Left click and release, left click, right click, copy, right click, paste, click so that that is not selected, then left click and hold, and I can move that little dot, and that can be my grounding clip that we use in our wiring contest. So there we've diagrammed two duplex receptacles in parallel. We've demonstrated how to change colors, how to make nice-looking conductors, how to draw and change the color on solderless connectors, how to wire in series, and how to wire parallel. Let's look at another circuit. This is a floor plan for a keyless lamp that is controlled by a single pole switch. You look in the ladder diagram below, we see that our ungrounded source conductor is going to a switch that is controlling a light. Now, you'll notice that in my ladder diagram, doesn't look like the conductors up here in my floor plan. In my floor plan, my source conductor is going to the light first. That's okay. It still works the same way. The floor plan is telling young people and teachers how to source the circuit. The ladder diagram is telling what the circuit should do. Whether our circuit is sourced through the light or through the switch, the ladder diagram is going to be the same because the switch controls the light. You'll notice that we have a dotted line. The dotted line is called a switch leg. We have a switch leg when power first passes through the lighting outlet box before going to the switch. Common mistake that students make is because the hot conductor enters here, they want to carry it straight to the light. It has to pass through the light box first to go to the switch, and then this dotted line represents the return to the light. Let's diagram this circuit. Remember that when we diagram circuits, we can draw our service entrance panel by selecting the rectangle and then changing the fill. Or I can simply go to one of my others. I can right click, copy, and I can select my blank screen and paste. And that saves us a little bit of time. Next thing I want to do is I want to draw my octagonal box. This octagonal box, remember, is representing 
by the vice box that's going to contain my keyless lamp conductors. I'm going to change it to no fill. I'm going to change the shape outline to black. The next thing that I want to do is I want to draw my box that's going to contain my switch. I'm going to draw a rectangular box. Changing the fill and the boundary colors. All right, I'm going to move this a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to go back up here to my symbols. I'm going to select. Let's try that again. Let's just right click on it. Copy. Go back to our slide. Right click and paste. I'm going to change the size of that. That looks a little silly. I'm going to change it so that it is roughly the same size, or maybe a little, maybe a little bit larger than my box. And that's going to be my keyless lamp. Or my light fixture. Then I want to go back up here to my pre-made symbols. I want to do a single pole switch. So I'm going to copy and right click and paste. And here again, I may want to change. I'm going to move this a little bit. Change the size of it so that it is appropriate for the box that I have. All right, let's go look at the floor plan again. Remember that this circuit is sourced through the light. So in my circuit, I'm going to make my cable run come out of the top of the service entrance panel. I'm going to do that by selecting shape in the line tool. I'm going to come up. Release, and I'm going to select the shape again. And go over and release. Remember that every time I've got to go up here and select it. Remember to affect, I must select. This conductor is selected. Let's, let's do something different right here. Let me back up. I'm going to delete that line. It is selected. I hit delete. I'm going to go back up here to insert shapes. Oh well, never mind. Let's just let's just do it this way. All right. I've got my line. I want to change these to black. So this one is selected. Holding control, I'm going to select the other two. Then I'm going to come over here and select that, which is changing it to black. Just another way to do it. But I want to change the outline weight of that. Because I want this to look like cable, I'm going to change that to a 6. Okay? Now, here again, I shouldn't have changed that to black. We know that cable isn't normally insulated black. But, just to show you how, these are already selected. All I've got to do is go to outline and I'm going to change that to yellow which is the common color for 12 gauge wire. How we're going to do this is 14 gauge wire which a lot of time lighting outlets will be 14 gauge. Remember select, hold control, select the other two, go back to shape outline and I can change that to blue. So this will be a 14 gauge circuit. All right, we're going to follow the basic rules of wiring again. We're going to start with our grounded or neutral conductor. I'm going to go to insert and shape. I'm going to check curve. Now, a switch does not utilize current. A switch is just a gate. It only opens and closes, make or break a circuit. So in this case, my white insulated conductor coming from the source is going to go and just connect directly to the silver terminal on the keyless light. That doesn't mean that we don't have a white conductor between the light and the switch. It just means that it's going to be used for a different purpose. So let's come in here now and let's draw 
our black insulated ungrounded conductor from our source. I'm going to change that to black. I've got to get power down to my switch. National Electrical Code 200.7c states that the white insulated conductor may be used to carry power to a switch, but that it cannot be used as the return from the switch to the light. So in this case, I'm going to draw in my white insulated conductor. I'm going to change my color to the blue that represents white. And then I'm going to re-identify it by just making a little black mark right here. Just drew a line. I'm going to change that to black and I'm going to change the weight to something that's easy to see. And so now I can move that by just left click hold and I can move it down here closer to the termination point. Now I'm going to, rather than draw another solderless connector, I'm going to come copy one. Uh-oh, control Z. I'm gonna right click, copy. I'm gonna go back down to my diagram, which is here. I'm gonna right click and paste. I'm going to select format and I'm going to change that shape fill to yellow and change my outline to yellow. And I've got a yellow connector that I'm going to use to attach those two conductors. So I've got my ungrounded conductor, black insulated, connected to a white we identified with black tape conductor that's going to come down and go to a terminal on my switch. Now this switch terminal should be brass colored here instead of that open, but that's okay. You get the idea. We've got a switch that has single pole switch with two terminals. I'm going to select the curve. I'm going to come down and carry power to the switch. Remember, I'm carrying power by means of the white insulated conductor that's been re-identified with black tape. All we have to do now is leave the switch and go to the light. We have a black insulated conductor in our non-metallic cable that we can do that with. So our black conductor is going to come down and connect to the other terminal. I'm going to change that to black. Then, selecting the curve again. We have successfully wired a keyless lamp in a single pole switch. All that remains is for us to make sure our metal boxes are bonded. So we're gonna go through our process again of bringing in our grounding conductors. Remember, we wanna make those green. I want to ground or bond the box. This time I'm just going to run it straight to the box here. And you'll know that that's bonded to the box and that we can put a dot there if we want to. Remember, just come over here and select the green dot, right click, copy, right click, paste. It shows up down here. And as long as I have the crosshairs, I can left click and hold. You can see it's sort of hard to get. So if I click off of it and then just right click, and let's try that again. Uh, now I can left click, hold, and move. And that can be our grounding clip. Then we'll do the same thing down on our next box. We're just going to, I'm going to move this again. That's our grounding clip. Our clip, we want to change the color of our conductor to green. All right, we can copy this connector here. And 
since our grounding conductors aren't going through, it doesn't have to be green. We could use a yellow solderless connector to tie those together. So we have successfully diagrammed a keyless lamp that is controlled by a single pole switch with the source conductor coming into the switch or the light, rather the lighting outlet box first. The remaining circuits, or floor plans here, are for students to use. The next circuit you'll see is the same circuit. It's still a light controlled by a single pole switch. It's just that in this circuit, our source conductor goes to the switch first. You need to keep that in mind when drawing your circuit. You'll notice that the ladder diagram looks exactly the same. The next circuit that students can draw is sort of combining our light and switch with a duplex receptacle. In this electrical circuit, the source conductor goes to the duplex receptacle first, then it goes to the lighting outlet box, and then we have a switch link. You'll notice in the ladder diagram though, that it's telling us that the duplex is hot all the time and the light is controlled by the switch. Another circuit that students can diagram is going to be the circuit. Um, well, this is the same circuit. This is just the showing you how to calculate load. So the other circuit that students can do is the light switch receptacle. It's just this time it is sourced through the light. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial on how to diagram electrical circuits using PowerPoints. You'll find uh, this particular PowerPoint available on the Ag Ed curriculum website. Ms. Steinkamp will be sending out an email that tells people where it can be found. I'll make sure there are some other resources on there as well in terms of other electrical circuits that students can draw. Teachers, you can also just go to the EMC wiring contest or the Ag Mechanics contest to get ideas for circuits that students can draw using PowerPoint that they can submit for a grade. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this helpful. If you think that you need any assistance or need clarification on any point, please don't hesitate to call one of the area agricultural mechanics teachers in Georgia. Thanks for your time. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you.